Hi everybody, today is Saturday and I'm standing here in downtown Fredericksburg in front of Meditation Rock. Many years ago, the founding of our country, this is where Mary Washington would come early in the morning as she meditated and prayed. Uh, she would pray for the country and she would pray for her son, George Washington, as he led the army. Fitting place, this large stone, uh, we think of today, Saturday, we think of today as the day where Jesus was in the tomb um, and the women would come in the morning uh, to this tomb, but they would be in for great surprise. The Gospels say very little about what happened on Saturday. We only read a few verses in Matthew's Gospel. We read how the Pharisees asked Pilate to have the tomb sealed with a rock and for guards to be set in place. They were apparently afraid that Jesus' followers would steal his body and propagate this lie that he had risen. But this is good because with both Jewish leaders and the Roman guards in place, there is no way anyone could get in there to steal his body. So way to go, God, uh, setting up one more verification that Jesus' resurrection was indeed the absolute truth. None of the Gospels record any really of the activities of the disciples on the Sabbath after his burial. We read yesterday at the end of Luke chapter 23 that the disciples rested on the Sabbath, which would have been normal. But I wonder how much true uh, deep rest they experienced uh, with their hearts as heavy as, as they were. Probably, probably not a lot of rest. You know, Jesus had told them and they missed it or perhaps thought he meant something entirely different when he said, a little while and you will not see me. And again, in a little while, you will see me. What is this that he says, a little while? We, we do not know what it is that he's saying. Now, the next step of what they thought was their journey would never happen. In fact, their journey had come to an abrupt end, one of great disappointment. Utter sadness would have been the dominant theme on this Sabbath day. And aside from their broken hearts, they, they would have been huddled together in fear of the Jewish leaders just as they would be on Sunday morning. Their hopes were crushed, their dreams were dashed, their friend, the one they had placed their hope in as Messiah, was dead. He had been brutally murdered as a criminal. And there was probably a great deal of anxiety in their hearts too. If, if this could happen to Jesus and this happened to him, could this happen to us too? So today, put yourself in the shoes of Jesus's closest friends, his, his followers, the misunderstandings, the confusion, the hurt, the sadness, the anxiety, the fear. What do we do now? So listen, if you're living in any way uh, now like this in your life, like that dark Saturday after Jesus's death, feeling like there's no future and no hope and you're wrestling with despair, let God know. Tell him, cry out to him what you're feeling. Tell him your struggles. Be real with him. Um, cry out for him to reveal his peace to your heart and cling. Listen, cling to this very hope. Tomorrow is coming. They didn't know what was coming. Listen, we know that tomorrow comes. It's a day when we pass from darkness into light. It's a day that we pass from death to life. Guys, tomorrow's coming.